Hello everyone. Um, in this video we're going to go through um, kind of the topic of the input features for our Keyence um, safety controller under the GC configurator um, software programming feature. So for starters we're going to go ahead and open up the GC configurator. Um, we're going to go ahead and create a new file and main controller of the GC1000 series standard mode and I'm just going to leave it titled whatever they uh, set for their kind of generic setup. I'm going to click OK and we're going to go through um, some of the particular inputs that are available to us when it comes to programming with this, this GC configurator software. So the very first one that they give us is um, an emergency stop function. We can drag that over so we can get kind of a feel of what it is. Um, most of us all are kind of familiar, at least if you had anything to do with safety, you're familiar with the, the emergency stop push button. Um, with this particular control function, you have the ability to plug it in as a, as a terminal block, so direct um, discrete wiring into the, the functional terminal blocks on the controller itself, or you also have the option to use it as a 5-pin remote I.O. through the Keyent's um, remote I.O. terminal blocks that come with this. I, for all intents and purposes, we're going to leave it connected directly to the terminal block. I'll explain the 5-pin terminal block a little later on when we get into talking about the gate switches. From there, you have the, the input terminals that you can decide what it is. So if you did the two inputs and the two test outputs, um, what that's going to do is the controller itself is going to give you two dedicated outputs that are sending power out from the controller to your your contact terminals on your push button and then from your push button you're going to bring those back into your two safety inputs. Um, if that's not your standard way of wiring you might say okay well we'll use one dedicated power supply that runs all of our safeties for instance and all of that 24 volts DC positives going out to the button and then from the button you're going back into the controller itself. Um, this right here, the one input, yeah, you can use that. Uh, it doesn't matter either one of these two one inputs. You could use those. Again, understand those are not considered on the, the higher end of the functional safety that you that generally you would be required to um, meet. Those would be like low level safety. So uh, you'll have to run your risk assessment in order to better understand what that requirement's going to be, but nevertheless it's still there for us to use. You also have the two inputs, one test output. So rather than running two outputs to this power to power that, you're going to run one test output. So one power out to your button, then from your button two inputs in return back. Still meets your safety criteria, but again, run your risk assessment, determine your requirements, and from there then you would go um, into that. Personally, me, I like to run everything on a dedicated 24 volt DC power instead of running my outputs. So I would go with the two inputs, but that's just me. Um, you can do it however you see fit in your or whatever your standard for your company might be. From there, you're going to dedicate whatever your terminal slot is. So in this one, it's auto defaulting me to the very first set of terminals because this is the very first uh, input feature that we have. And we might say OK and go ahead and dedicate it to those. And then over here under main controller, it now tells me that I have... Um, zero and one are dedicated to something and all the rest of these terminals are open. If I want to add a comment to say like E stop button one, I have the ability to do that as well. So the programmer along the way, they can easily see what, what I'm looking at. If I want to change the label to E stop, I also have the ability to change the label as well just however you're you're comfortable with whatever you're used to programming whatever you feel you need to do to help yourself as well as those that might program after you do that to help you out and, and Keyence has done a very good job as trying to make this um, as user friendly as, as possible as well as programmer friendly and um, maintenance troubleshooting friendly as well um, I'm going to skip over the limit switch because most cases we don't generally use a limit switch. Um, if you are, be sure you're using a, a safety rated limit switch. Um, they're not generally, um, they, are, they are control reliable and there are ones that are control reliable, but they're not generally considered the safest means possible. So they're kind of left out there on the, the kind of the edge of things. 
Um, interlock switches are very common. The particular interlock switch that we're talking about here is just like a magnetic um, interlocked guard switch, if you will. Um, once again, we have the ability to change that to a, a five pin remote or a terminal block. Um, commonality, I like to use the two inputs as well, like I did on the other one, but this one you also have the option of having a PNP two input, which is generally pretty similar to what's going on right here. Um, it's kind of open a little bit more for you. Um, once again, you can select your terminal blocks. Once again, you can also change the name over here as well as adding a comment to what it's doing. After you've assigned your terminal, once again, for the main controller, they go ahead and assign it over here so you have the ability to see that. Guard locking switch is a little different than the interlock switch um, in the fact that it gives you the actual physical guard lock. This is the actual physical output going from the controller or whatever you might assign it to that physically locks the termination um, or the lock itself. Once again, you have the ability, this one you're going to actually have to use an 8 pin for. Reason being is because it needs that extra um, three cables or three wires, excuse me, for those, those terminals to, to run the guard lock itself. You have the ability of the terminal lock or the 8 pin. I'm going to leave it on terminal block. And this one generally down here is going to follow whatever I assign the, the, the physical guard switch itself to. Once again, I like the two input. You can set it as an auxiliary output, a safety output, or you could even have a double safety output depending on what your requirement is. Um, once again, you assign the terminals. And then from here, I have a safety output. and I'm going to go ahead and assign that as well. So we can see again over here on the main controller, they've done this as well as giving us a safety output. Now this is a Keyence dedicated control unit right here, this GS series. This is a GS series guard lock um, switch, but I believe this is the one that is just the magnetic interlock switch itself, not a physical guard locking switch. So they offer us the ability to program it through the GC link, which is another feature um, that they offer for us. Um, I would strongly encourage you if you want to consider the GC link, it's out there. It's a, it's an open option. It's a very good option to consider, but definitely consult your representative as well as the brochure in order to better understand how GC link is going to function and work for your your process. Um, again, you have terminal block options, so you could do um, hardwire discrete I/O back into the controller. You could also use the five pin or eight pin remote I/O. In this case, I'm going to go ahead and say let's use the five pin remote I/O. Um, from there, I would you're, you're only left with the one option of the PNP inputs. Now, it's not offering me anything here. And the reason for that is because I have not assigned a remote I.O. terminal block or for us to um, use. So I would have to go over to my unit and go into unit settings. And I would have to scroll down to find the 5 pin I.O. module. So Kians has done a really good job here where it's the GC-R45 or the GC-R48. The 45 is going to be your 5 pin and the 48 is going to be your 8 pin module. In this case, because I've assigned a 4 5 pin module, I'm going to go ahead and drop that in over here. So now I have configured myself to have an external I.O. module. Once I've assigned that, I can come over here and say, hey, that's the terminal that I need to use. I would then click OK. And now I've been given, okay, terminal one is the one that's going to be my plugin for this particular unit. I have the option to a standard generic light curtain. Um, once again, you can change your label, you can use your five pin remote IO, you can use your terminal block, whatever you might want to use. You're limited on PMP inputs, and that's all you've got. Um, generally, that's generally what light curtains are sending back as a PMP input. Once again, assign your, your terminals, um, and then you go from there. Uh, Keyence has done a really good job, and I'm just going to explain one of these, so that's just going to be the GLR series. So Keyence offers the GL-R series or the GL-S series. They're both light curtains that they offer. They're both great, excellent light curtains. Um, again, risk assessment, determine your needs for your particular application. Um, they standardize it to send it back to the GC link, but I also have the option of the terminal block or the remote I.O. 5 pin. I'm going to go ahead and say let's use the GC link and let's just give us kind of an idea of how that looks. 
Um, we have the only option of the two PMP inputs as well, and then it's going to say, okay, what do you want to use? You want to use port A or port B? From there, we can say, okay, port A is what we're going to use. You have two different GC link ports, and there you can use those ports as the dedicated system. Um, we also have an option for a generic laser scanner. So we might have like a sick laser scanner tied in with our Keyent system here. We have the option to use a terminal block or we have the option of the 5 pin remote I.O. block. I'll keep it at the terminal block. We have an option for two inputs or one input PNP based and I'm going to go ahead and leave it at that and assign my inputs. Um, from there we then could say we can use one of the two Keyent's based laser scanners. So the SC series is the older edition, or we have the SC-V series, which is the newer edition that has several uh, modern features that are very handy for us to use, including uh, Ethernet IP, so that you could um, direct it into your uh, PLC controller if you desire to do so. Um, I'm going to go ahead and just use the SC-V series, because again, it's a newer controller. Um, I have the option to select GC link as well as terminal blocks, uh, 5 pin IO, or I have the option to use the GC link times 2. So this offers me the ability to use the GC link in both ports rather than just a single port. Um, once again, I'm only allowed the PMP2 input. Um, in this particular case, I want to assign it to only port B. So port A is now dedicated to my... GLR um, based Keyent's light curtain and port B is now dedicated to my uh, SC uh, scanner. I'm going to go ahead and kind of um, go through probably the next three items just so we get kind of a feel. Some of these other options down here um, We'll continue on looking down here. They all kind of are repetitive to what we've already gone through. They're very similar. They're just uh, different devices based on our, our needs and our requirements, based off of our risk assessment for what we might need. So the pull rope, once again, same different, same setup. We can use a five pin terminal block on that. We might say we only want to use two inputs on that. Um, send it into port two. And now we've assigned port two as our five pin connected pull rope. Keyence doesn't necessarily sell one of these, but we might go ahead and, and wire in a field terminal connector based off of our requirements or our need. Um, safety mat, a similar setup. Um, I'm going to go ahead and leave that on our terminal block. Um, go ahead and assign those two terminals and, and let it go from there. Uh, we might have a two-hand control device that we want to bring in. And we might say, okay, well, we're using only the two inputs and we're dedicating them that way and then this particular one we're going to bring them into that input and then in that last input remainder. Um, at this point, I hate to be that guy, but I've already filled up all of my inputs so I'm going to need to add another module for our demonstration purposes and I'm going to add the GS or the GCS84 which is 8 safety inputs and 4 safety outputs and I'm just going to add that on as an extension module onto my GC1000 unit. That way I have the additional um, items here. If for instance you have any other reason to have another safety input that's not labeled here, um, what that might be. So you might have something that, like in the, the class of the limit switches, only rather than it being a limit switch it might be like a, a physical proc switch or or something that's that's totally different to all of these that, that most of us have never even heard of before. In those cases you might select like other safety input switch or other safety input as a dedicated setup. Um, if we're using like a monitoring circuit we might use another other safety input in this particular case and we might use two inputs on that and monitor is that. Um, with our auxiliaries like I just mentioned you might actually even pull that as like other input um, and then we have the option to say call it that one input and pull it in as a safety input too. It's kind of open on that as to how we need to program that for our requirements but leave that but understand that there is the way there is best practices under the safety um, options and stuff and it's highly more rec it's highly recommended that you would use it as a safety input and call it a safety input even if it's a monitoring circuit however understand that a monitoring circuit does only generally require one 
physical I.O. Um, device or I.O. input. So with that being said, you would only need to have that other input set as your discrete auxiliary input for monitoring that your safety contactor has been removed from, from power. Um, let's say we need to use a reset button. Now generally all of our circuits are going to require a manual reset rather than an automated reset. Um, Keyence does give us the reset switch. Uh, generally we call that like a power on or something along those lines. Safety reset something in there. And once again we just assign that as a single individual input to us. Again, there are other options that we do have, so we might have like a muting input or an EDM input or a safety plug. Those are options that we do have that Keyence does offer us for our particular programming, but for majority of our, our programs and majority of the programs in the field that you'll see, this is pretty much covers all of your inputs that you're going to have. And in fact, this probably covers 90% of all inputs that are in existence on most machines out there. Yes, you'll have um, some enabling devices, and they will have a, a way of how they're played into the uh, controller. But this does cover, like I said, about 90% of your, your features. So that pretty well concludes our, our video on our input devices. So uh, thank you for watching, and stay tuned for output devices.